Well, today we're going to be looking at the range of Star Trek The Motion Picture Comics produced by Marvel. Um, and it went from December 79 to, I think, February 82. So, not a bad run um, for a comic series based off a single movie. Um, Marvel were doing a lot of film adaptations at the time. Uh, they'd done things like uh, Logan's Run... Um, things like that. So they had a bit of success with uh, film adaptations and if you were lucky, if the film was successful enough, they could get a monthly sort of series out of it. Um, they did it with the Battlestar Galactica comics that I discussed last time and they did it again with Star Trek The Motion Picture. So again, they Marvel went down the standard route that they did for most of these things which was to produce a super special which is basically a very glossy uh, one-off adaptation of a movie and then if that sold well enough and there was enough uh, sort of uh, feedback positive feedback they could then spin it off into a regular monthly series um, so in the UK we didn't get the the glossy super special but we did get uh, in the uh, Christmas of 79 I think it was um, yeah 79 uh, we got the Star Trek Motion Picture Annual. Now, annuals are, a, I think, a specific UK thing. Not like the annuals you'd get yearly for Marvel in comics. UK annuals started off as a hardback collection of reprinted, uh, usually comics, could be articles, things like that. Um, and they were a Christmas staple. They were cheaply produced, very quickly remaindered, so any that weren't sold, shops could send back and they'd be pulped. So they were pretty much a win-win situation for shops. And for Star Trek The Motion Picture, we got the adaptation I'll be going through in a moment. Um, unfortunately, my copy is all cut up. I need to get another copy, really. You can pick this up really cheaply. Um, and it was this was the first sort of look I had at Star Trek The Motion Picture. A big Star Trek fan, loved the original series, grew up with it. Uh, the Motion Picture came out. And before I could go to the cinema to see it, I read this and I fell in love with it. I fell in love with the uniforms. I tried making uniforms for my Mego figures. Absolutely adored it. Um, so that's what we got in the UK. But in the US, you got the Super Special. So it's a lovely glossy magazine. Um, and there was lots of articles, photos um, that just made the film look amazing. So this is Super Special number 15. And then you got a, an adaptation of the film. And it's a really good one. Um, it's a, a good read on its in its own merit. Um, it has a few scenes in it that were trimmed from the motion picture. The artwork is, is just great on it. It was um, Dave Cockrum, I think, did the artwork. Um, so basically it tells the story of the film. And it takes some sort of poetic bits like it it adds the uh, which again I read in here and then it wasn't in the movie um, it adds the biblical quote at the beginning um, and it took sort of artistic uh, risks so like this is the Klingon ship being absorbed by Vija and even in we'll go through the comics but even in the comics they 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 sort of experimented with the way that the artwork used colors etc it was great so it told a story, probably everyone's read this one by now. Um, great artwork, Scotty looking a little bit perplexed. And also look, so when they're flying across to look at the Enterprise, one page, and he's on the bridge, that's all it needs. So this is what I mean, they would do things like using colour with no black lines on, um, which was unusual for the way these comics were produced, basically you would have a pencil and an inko and they would make black and white pages and then the colourist would come along and they wouldn't colour the original pages but they would colour copies of them and so this sort of thing was quite difficult. Um, so it goes through, does the whole story, um, absolutely great adaptation, look at, it's just amazing, look at that centre spread. Um, I say it covers a few scenes later on, like uh, the the memory wall, 
adaptation, you know, a scene in the adaptation that we didn't get in the movie. Um, absolutely great read, and I fell in love with this story from this. Um, look at this, the colour with no black outlines. Really nicely done. So as you can see, Kirk, Kirk goes with Spock on the uh, into the office. No. Um, so yeah, well worth picking up. Again, you can still pick up this super special pretty cheaply. Um, but then that sold really well. So Marvel then decided to do a monthly series. And as was their sort of tradition, they would split up the super specials, the page count into usually three issues. And this gave them sort of a, a window that while they're working on issue four onwards, they've got three issues in the bag, so to speak. Um, and we look at the covers of them really nicely done and then it does because it's on newsprint page not quite as vibrant um, but otherwise really good story and then we've got adverts 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 um, so they they split the issue up the story up into three issues but we did get a few splash screens that we didn't get like that one we didn't get that in a super special because basically we didn't need that page. And then in issue three, we get a shot of the Enterprise that's new. Um, and then these sold really well. I think it was a, a, a really good, can get the page back, really good seller for Marvel. So they decided after issue three to carry on. Now the only drawback they had was their licensing agreement, which Star Trek Motion Picture licensing was horribly torturous um, it just made no sense whatsoever uh, look at the history of Mego was just just mad um, and Marvel only had rights to anything that appeared in the film couldn't use anything else so that was both a drawback and a strength in that um, this run of comics is unique in that you don't get really any of the bigger sort of Star Trek universe um, uh, what was good, obviously, in the film, you had Klingons, so they could use them. But they, they started off, so this one is um, basically, they, I love these covers, look at this. So basically, the, they would go off on their own story, and they would do weird, weird stories. Absolutely pushing the boundaries of, of Star Trek, as it should be. So this one is like a, a, a ghost story. Um, this sort of creature comes aboard the Enterprise and it's using psychic emanations to um, put the greatest fears of the crew uh, in into a form, you know, like a physical form. Um, it's good, good story. Uh, almost all of these issues are great stories. Some are better than others. Yay, black hole. Um, so it, it goes on, but you can't, again, they can't use anything that wasn't in the, the, the film. And I quite like that. I like this is one of my favourite versions of Trek. Um, the crew's fears were very pedestrian, to be honest. Very classical <laughs> horror story. Frankenstein's monster. Um, but well worth a read. I'm, I'm sure somewhere in here. Oh yeah, the Klingons appear at the end. Here we go. So the Klingons were based on the movie ones. So they look a little bit different. Um, and then the story carries on. Um, Klingons killing people as they do. So like this, where people would get phasered and it would just be a block of colour with no outline. Great, really nice. Transport effect, same, they would do that. And it goes through. Uh, and it, there's sort of, there's a, as usual in Star Trek, there's a scientific reason why all these horrors come about um, and then we move on we would get like political thrillers so this one was like a, uh, a whodunit um, on the Enterprise so again they're transporting an ambassador and he gets killed and they try and work out who it is uh, the Enterprise was useless at transporting ambassadors wasn't it terrible um, and various various stories all of them well worth a read um, it started to get a bit strange though, obviously stories were running out, so yeah, it's good stuff. And it gives you an idea what phase two the series would have been, because obviously the motion picture was meant to be a TV series originally, called Star Trek Phase Two, and this, these, these comics give you an idea about that. 
Um, they're almost like, you could think of them as adaptations of that series, if that series had unlimited budget. Um, so the stories went on, and then you started getting weird things like this, so Spock the Barbarian, obviously a play on Conan the Barbarian, so Spock doing weird stuff. Um, the Loch Ness Monster in Space. Great cover, that would make a good poster, wouldn't it? That's a good cover. Um, Janice Rand appeared again, she turned up. Um, Nurse Chapel appeared. Dr. McCoy's daughter finally appears in comic form. Um, and again, the artwork was always good, universally good in this series. But Cornelius has paid a visit from the Planet of the Apes. Um, very enjoyable. Uh, the Sphinx comes alive, or a version of, and you've got, um, you remember, what was it, who mourns for Adonis, which was the Greek gods, and this one, the Egyptian gods come alive. Look at that guy. He's not having a good time, is he? Spock using logic to shoot people in the head. Uh, they met the devil. Turns out it isn't the devil, but uh, Spock with a phaser gun. Spock was gun mad in this series. Um, this is this is my one of my favourites. I remember when this one came out, and I you know, rushed to the news agent and buy them. And I read this one, and I saw this cover, and I thought this comic probably won't last much longer. We've we've got to the point where we're having names. It's actually a really good story. It's a really good story, but these covers, they obviously, you know, readership was flagging, so they wanted to sell them. Um, one of the best covers, Walt Simonson cover, I love that. That would make a good poster. Um, bit of a, a dull story, I think, this one. Towards the end of the run, different artwork, not bad. And then we finally, it got to um, issue 18. And this was a surprise, special last issue collector's item. Uh, yeah, the readership, the, the money had just gone. They ran out. So this was the last episode, last issue of, uh, of this series. Um, and it was the end of a, a, an era for Star Trek, because the next time it would come back in comic book form, it would be with DC, and it was after Star Trek II. Um, which, again, a great comic series. But there's something about these marvels. They're just, it's its a, a glimpse into a world we never got. My favorite sort of uh, period of Trek. Um, and then in the UK, like I say, some, some shops did carry these American uh, comics, uh, the imprints. Um, so you see that one says UK on it. They were imported, 20p. Um, but mainly we got reprints, so in, oh, I can't remember the name of the comic, but there was a comic that reprinted the Star Trek the Motion Picture series. It was called, not Star-Lord, someone will tell me in the comments, um, which printed that. But then we also got things like the Star Trek Summer Special, uh, and we would get just reprints. But of course, in the UK, we always got black and white reprints. I don't know why. Is it because most comics in Britain were black and white? But what I like about these, it does reprint a lot of the uh, the sort of the filler from the monthly comic, but all collected together. So look at that, you can, there's lots of little little uh, shots of uniforms and insignia and stuff like that. There you go, there's her. Um, and basically it was two issues cobbled together in black and white form, but we loved it as kids, absolutely loved it. But yeah, these comics, they're still available fairly cheaply. Um, you can pick them up for a you know, couple of quid per issue. Some of the issues are rarer than others. Some of them go up to sort of four, five, six quid. The first three, although they tend to be the most common, tend to keep the most value because obviously it's the motion picture. But yeah, um, keep an eye on eBay. You can pick these up. They're well worth it. Excellent read back when comics were it was all about the story and the artwork of it, you know, it was, it sounds stupid, that's what a comic's about, but uh, they, there was just something, something about them that made them special. But uh, thanks for watching for that one. Um, I did do a Battlestar Galactica one, if you have a look in my uh, uh, playlist and you'll, you'll see that. Um, but thanks for watching and I'll see you again next time. Thanks then, bye.